In today's abandoned video, we are exploring the abandoned TSS Duke of Lancaster shipwreck, which has sat beached on the banks of North Wales for 20 years. The famous vessel's interior has never been properly documented, and during the challenging mission required, we would find out why. What, you're on my fucking property and you're now I'm fucking stealing? Alistair, what? have you heard that 85% of people are not subscribed? You're joking. They need to hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Like seeing more of the behind the scenes of our explorations similar to this video, we have free magazines available that dive deeper into some of the most interesting properties we have covered with information we can't share anywhere else. Check it out using the link in our description on our website. It's crazy that we've never been here before. After, I don't know, five, six years of exploring, it's such a classic place. Maybe we're feeling more confident these days into doing something like this. But yeah, this is our first ever recce. Yeah, initial scout of the Duke. We've got a <laughs> very complex plan to get to. Obviously, we're in the area, so we're gonna have a little look. Yeah. See what we think. Maybe run on, get caught. See, see how long we have, yeah. Oh, I can see one on one or two cameras there. Wow. She's some vessel. We do have a plan in mind, but we're just taking this time to see what things look like in real life, because it's always a lot different than on Google Maps. Okay, so maybe they're further to the right. They must be, and um, means they must be only responding to cameras. Yeah. Our first scout of the impressive ship had gone further than we ever anticipated. With the Duke being notoriously sealed and protected by 24-7 security and multiple cameras, we had only casually suggested rough ideas on how we would get on board. However, liking what we saw on this visit, soon we were around the back without alerting the surveillance poles, assessing a potential route up. This is what we're looking at from the back. Made it here undetected, which is a good sign. And um, yeah, we have our plan, plan ready. So I expect the next time you see us is probably in training in preparation for this ascension. At this stage, it still felt like a mammoth task, but our confidence and ideas had definitely increased. Okay, so after our little look around the boat, we decided we wanted to do a bit of style, we wanted to abseil off it, so me and Phil are here to do a little bit of practice, a little bit of training. I know what I'm doing, I think. Uh, <laughs> I hope so, because yeah. your life's in my hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right, let's go for it, Theo. Yeah, so we've done a safety test because safety's paramount. Yeah, you've had a you've had a one or two goes now, so should be fairly confident. Alex is the climber, climber out the group, so he's man behind the ropes on most things. I am. So I've not really taken to ropes much anymore. But this is our little test. It's a techie test, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good one because, I mean, it's not realistic to have the boat with me, but it, it makes you think about what you're doing to get down this little walk. Like this bit here, for someone that also doesn't like heights, is quite a horrible little section. Yeah. Jump across it. It's really hard to make it look 
good <laughs> like yeah, on, on these bits. Looks really awful, um, but. Yeah, it's because you're kind of scrambling over these rocks when you actually just on this last section when you're hanging. It, it feels a lot more comfortable, so that's why I think it's good to show people on this bit. With Alex and Theo experienced with the climbing equipment, we were ready to attempt the ship itself. So that night, we found ourselves back in North Wales for the real thing. Okay, it's the morning of our mission to get on board of the Duke of Lancaster. The time is currently, was it 6.22? That is correct. It's still dark for another couple hours. How, how are we feeling? Yeah, we're feeling good this morning. We've had a lovely four hours sleep. <laughs> um, plenty of breakfast down our gullets. Yeah, enough, enough chatter from you. Alex, you're the mastermind <laughs> of, uh, of this one. I've had any breakfast. Yeah. I'm feeling fresh though. Got a heavy bag full of rope. Duke is waiting for us. <laughs> Currently approaching the uh, boat. It's very dark down these country paths, but we're in high spirits. We're quite confident with the planning and preparation we've done. And um, I feel like if, if we, we do our job properly, we should be on here within an hour or so. And then we just have to wait for the sunrise. Yeah, the stars are out. There's not much traffic around here, so it's very atmospheric as well. It feels like we're doing something that's a lot more serious than a, a ship. But lo and behold, all this is just for the big boat. We're coming off path now. Um, to go onto the rocks around the side of the ship. This is where they spoke. Cloaked in darkness, we would sneak between the camera's channels. Unknowing whether we had been seen or not, we began our ascension. One by one, we reached the ship's frosty deck. tension was nowhere near over, as we had to find a way inside the vessel before sunrise, when our chances of being spotted would quadruple. As this daylight breaks, our next task is to find a way inside before it gets too light and we get too obvious. Already lighter than we had hoped for to be at this stage. So we don't expect when you get on here for it to actually be sealed. Here's the fin. These are the uh, really old lifeboats. Mm -hmm. 
searching for an entry point, the sun gradually peaking over the horizon, we started to find gaps in abundance. However, internal blocking proved most efforts to be unsuccessful. The worm returns unsuccessful. <laughs> Thank you. Ollie, I might need you as a, a stomach support. Around, stomach. Around. I'll just fill. Smile and wave. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite a good group shot, this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Ollie, I need stomach support. Yeah. Alex, can you move forward? Thankfully, a glorious sunrise coincided with one entrance finally working out for us. As daylight broke over the North Wales coastline, we were inside the Duke of Lancaster. The abandoned ship is truly a spectacle to behold, famous in the region, visible from the nearby train line and roads for miles. At a length of more than 110 metres, once able to inhabit 1,200 passengers, it is colossal, and after knowing about it for years, we felt extremely fortunate to be within its seemingly impenetrable walls, ready to explore it in its entirety. Side after a long entry, beginning on some of the upper levels, they're actually quite bare. It's decaying, isn't it? It's a lot more decaying than I thought it was going to be. It's very decayed. I mean, the little whiffs that you could get from open doors and stuff, but you could tell it was going to be. Yeah. This looks like this was covered up, this section. Yeah, it was, I think. I don't know if there's anything of interest beyond it. Oh, that looks cool. I'll let you go check out that. <laughs> it's like an office. No, little bedrooms by the looks of things. This one's in really good condition. Woodwork's more than it, it stinks. Everything's still intact. I think this room's even nicer. The blue colour scheme is very fitting. We've got our first sighting of the security guard. He's on the phone, strolling about. He just looks like he's doing a casual patrol, if anything, around the back. But it's interesting to see that he's not just stationary in the cabin. He's to the right. Coming past now. He doesn't look like he's at panic station, so I think we're good. He's going to the left, going back towards the cabin. This empty level would have once hosted an arcade, and the many machines had been left when the boat was vacated, yet had been removed in 2012, after local collectors purchased the arcade games from the Duke's owners. It's a cool staircase. Yeah. 
amusement arcade. All right, this is a lot more interesting already. Look at this. little seating areas for people. Yeah, I love the way it curves. It wouldn't be fair to infiltrate the Duke of Lancaster without touching on its fascinating history. How and why is a gigantic passenger ship sat permanently beached on the North Wales coast? What went wrong? She was built at Belfast between 1955 and 56, designed to operate as a cruise ship and a passenger ferry running from Hazem to Belfast. However, she ended up travelling all over, completing similar journeys in the Scottish Islands, Belgium, Netherlands, Spain, Norway and Denmark. In the mid-1960s, passenger ships like the Duke of Lancaster were losing footfall, gradually being replaced by car ferries. The company decided to convert the Duke of Lancaster to accommodate vehicles, enabling her to carry 105 cars and 1,200 passengers whilst her cruise ship period ceased, and the boat would operate short crossings until November 1978 when she was retired. The Duke arrived in North Wales in 1979 where she was permanently beached, bricked into a bank next to the River Dee. Here, her intended use was as a static leisure centre called the Fun Ship, where visitors could come on board and enjoy various restaurants, bars, leisure facilities, markets, and even visit the vessel's old engine room and bridge. However, there were frequent legal battles with the council, and in 2004, the owners walked away, and subsequent owners have found a similar fate. Since then, the ship has remained abandoned, Rusting for more than 20 years, a wondrous attraction for passerbys, who often stop for dog walks and photograph, but nobody is allowed on board. Entering B deck, just off of the main reception. Instantly, met with a bright decaying room. Just looks like it's got storage items in here. These look like arcade coins, old slips, titled Fun Ship. Bell Fruit 10p token. And then the admission ship, TSS Duke of Lancaster. This was definitely a staff room though, during its operating years. You can see hooks where they'd hang the pirate bar keys, arcade, pool room keys and more. It is really decaying. This room is totally empty compared to the one before that Theo's in. I think this would have been a bathroom or changing room. Hold the clock on the wall. Just want to be careful because you can never be sure of how much weight water is putting on floors. This looks like a big room. But there's nothing in here. No painting. Oh, actually, this is quite cool. Imagine this would have been a games room. You've got three pool tables. And then a couple of foosball tables as well. 
you would imagine there would be a lot of seating around here too. But they've been dismantled and left in that corner. Exiting the staff areas, we were coming into the areas of the fun ship that would have been open for the public, such as this recreational space. It was a promising sign with furniture and old signage remaining. The decay on the ceiling is so cool. It's unlike anything you see in regular abandoned buildings. I think because of the sea breeze attacking the old ship. B deck continues onwards. Luckily this bit's a natural light. So we'd have to worry about the torchlight too much. Picnic area. I presume that's this. Oh wow. That is really nice. Airport like I'd like to say. Three above seats. It's definitely very public transport kind of design, but the natural light in here coming through is stunning. Imagine all our effort for an empty ship. It was fitting that the Duke of Lancaster has mostly been left as a time capsule from 2004. We don't often see structures with as little vandalism and everything left anymore. But perhaps the high security has been the reason why the ship is in an encapsulating condition. In this unassuming room, there's just this beautiful old wooden desk full of papers. See the detail in there. A very, very disgusting newspaper. It's actually dated 1981 at the top corner. Wonder where this would have resided originally because it definitely didn't see this room. Judging by the fact it's on a deck as well, you would have thought this would have been in an office. out window and a bunch of seats ahead can probably only mean one thing and that that's a cinema and judging by the decaying numbers on the front of the seat I would presume that is the case I assume the screen would be on the back of the uh, the door once it's shut it's full of cobwebs very decaying These are the uh, left and right staircases for people going up and people going down that you often see on ships for fire safety. Blue lounge. That's behind us. Oh, what on earth is that? Kitchen appliance. It's massive. <laughs> There's a uh, pool in here. Unfortunately, all the tables are gone. Look at that sign there, it's really cool. It is, isn't it? I wonder if there's any of them left. Judging by the theme so far, I doubt it. Sadly not. Very flooded in here. I can see a couple more pool tables at the far end, like the ones that are upstairs. But no darts boards. Jesus Christ. It's a bit unsettling being in a 
a boat that's flooded. This appears to be the cafeteria, which looks incredible. Completely left as I squeeze through this gap. There's a sign there, trays. You put your trays under the table, which is a really neat little trick actually. You don't see that anymore. How cool is this? So cool. That's exact that's literally my Lex line. Especially oh, it's all left like this. This is something you'd see in a uh, a mall in America. Even all the signs, oh my gosh, and that's a model as well on the counter. And all the signs on the menu are still written at the back. You just can't ask for much more. Look at that. Beef burger, 99p with chips. Yeah, you can tell it's dated just by the prices. <laughs> that's insane. Fish and chip, £1.25. The problem is with this place is that a lot of doors are locked and welded shut, as we're finding. So this is becoming quite common practice. We're obviously not including most of it there to make the video a bit more interesting. With camera on as well. Do you want to take the world's longest try? <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Now I continue. Here's the sign for the Sea View cafeteria that we were just in. I really like the, uh... the Hong sign, actually. All the signs in this place have been really cool so far. I tell this is a little bit more like service tunnel esque from when it was an operating ship and not something that was. Pop up, leave it open. Yeah. There's another restaurant apparently. I wonder why this is course cordon bell. Pause in the action. Watch the step. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. It's gone back to that kind of that retro esque. Yeah, thing. exactly. That we first saw. Get the again. glasses up. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the signage again. So this is that staircase that we started at. Oh yeah, so it is. This one's padlocked, but it's missing. Unlike the rest of the places, it's hardly decaying as well. Yeah. She's just basically able to get back in use right now. Yeah, this is awesome. It's totally untouched. This bar and others we would find, one which was locked up for good, were likely kept traditional for 80s and 90s visitors of the fun ship to experience how life was in a cruise ship of the 50s. We are fairly confident this very room was the first class suite during the Duke's operational period as a passenger ferry. Behind the bar. Still here. This just looks outdated though. 
maybe that's just what they had to deal with because it was on a ship. I've never seen taps that look this tacky, I guess you'd say. This is awesome. Last place I've seen like this was Station Hotel, I think. It's very reminiscent of that. Interesting to compare the prices. Soup of the day, fruit juice, roast beef, grilled pork and grilled lamb chops. And here look, chicken and chips, served with salad, roll, butter, £1.60. Beef burger and chips, £1.50. Jumbo sausage, 90p. With chips and salad and bread. It's just unheard of. Get cheese and biscuits for 50p. That's what I would go for. Just mental though, I love comparing stuff like this now and then. You get a tea for 20p, like... P and O, you should be watching this. So here's another one all boarded up and padlocked. This one's took the window out. And glancing through it is really cool in there as well. Just the way that if this wasn't in this ship, it would all be mismatched and all the chairs and furniture would just be everywhere. I know, and that's what's so special about it. Yeah. That. Just the way it looks like it was literally just left yesterday and then abandoned for like 30 years. But yeah, these rooms are still so immaculate. Mm. Bit of a further look. More unbroken glassware. It's so strange why these rooms are so immaculate and untouched. I gotta say, the American theme is very strong here. I love the lighting. Look at these, I've hardly ever seen these before. I've just noticed a bunch of menus for the Dolphin Restaurant, the Captain's Table. Look at the prices. All the pizzas. £2.76. The most expensive being £3.22. It's absolutely incredible how prices have changed. And there's the front cover. So I presume this is the central kitchen. There's not many appliances left anymore. We've already seen one scattered about the place. Every kitchen that is abandoned has the same smell about it, and this is no exception. I don't think there's anything special, but definitely not a small operation for the kitchen staff here. Running the restaurant, the cafeteria behind us that we've already been through, and everything else. decayed through here. These symbols on the wall and all of these would have had photos in. You see some of them are still there. I don't think this is Duke related but it's still cool. There's text under this one. Connor's key, the grain elevator, tugged by, towed by Tug in 1926. Very interesting. This one is also Connor's Key, but 1959. You can see cooling towers in the background. I 
the ground floor, which means we've got to be a little bit quieter. Security are patrolling. Uh, it's very interesting. It's like they just stole all the yeah. crap there. Yeah. These these here are the doors they use. Yeah, you can tell, can't you? This is all stuff that someone could come in and get. Yeah. This bit definitely doesn't feel as abandoned, although there's still items and stuff. There's not really anything interesting down here. Ten people game on the one. Weird that assortment. I mean, why is there a trolley in here? <laughs> and then a bunch of refurbished benches. Either way, it's cool to be at the bottom of the ship. Gives you a full three run from each end. Shows you really how big it is. We're now back on deck. Just about to leave. We're just having a look at the during the day. It's a bit different to how it looked in the early morning. We tried to get into the control room, which is here, but unfortunately it's all sealed. Um, I imagine I'll insert some old video footage of how it looks, because it still is like that. We can just about make it make it out through the glass. But yeah, you can tell when you're on board, walking around the ship, how destroyed it is. All the foliage growing on these walkways, the rust water damage that's making the wood rot. Yeah, it's, it's not really safe to be on. And I mean, you saw what the inside looked like. So the plan is now to make our, um, our interesting descent, this time in broad daylight, and see if we can make it off this boat without detection. And then it is mission success. It was time to put our training into practice as we prepared to abseil off the ship's stern. Alright, the time has come. Call me the piglet. <laughs> <laughs> the guinea pig. Time has come. We're preparing the gear. It's time to get off this <laughs> darn boat. Mm. Um, and we're actually using the boat as well to our advantage with these large metal things that we can attach the ropes to. Yeah, somewhere down there is the aim. So we'll see how this goes. We've, we've practiced, but we've never done it properly. Or in a real life situation. You're all uh, happy there. Oh. Alright, yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Let's see our instructor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing out the tightest. <laughs> you look like you got a nappy on. <laughs> It just becomes a little bungee jump, you know? <laughs> when you get off, I'll just, um, just take your eyes off. Nice. Yeah, it's a You can hold the rope, can't you? Oh, no. What, I have to start walking? I'm start walking. Petrified. Lean right back. Lean all the way back. All the way back. And on the rope. Start going back. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh. 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 This man is not afraid of heights, so <coughs> should be fine. As you can see, he stands freely on the top of the baluster <laughs> with a death drop right behind him.
a lesson that you can never take urban exploration for granted until you are well and truly in the clear. The plan was for myself and Ollie to leave separately to Theo and Alex, purely to get a drone shot of them descending off the ship. However, with the tide further in, and perhaps a bit of carelessness after spending hours on the boat, we were spotted by one of the cameras. This would mean that when Alex and Theo eventually came down pointlessly later because it was too windy to fly the drone, they wouldn't have the freedom of time and focus I and Ollie had during the abseil. Oh, no. You're on. You're on. Oh, shit, is Just us. Oh, good. Will this hold me now? If I yeah. don't do anything? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, we're just getting him down safely, mate. We're just, we're just taking photos. We like history. We are. It's not moving. Go on. It's not moving. Okay. Just pull it. It's going. It's going. Where? There you go. I'm still not moving. Yeah, there you go. Come on, just keep feeding it through. Eventually, Theo was able to get down, and now it was only Alex left on board the Duke of Lancaster. Oh, we 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 don't break anything, mate. We don't break anything. We're not in a vehicle here, no. Despite the security guard being relatively calm, he wasn't alone and was about to be joined by another man. Meanwhile, Alex was forced to focus on his first ever solo descent, putting all else aside for the time being. No, it no, we'll pull it down. It We're going, but yeah, we're not there. leaving with our rope. Yeah. Yeah. That it's this oh. is technically stealing, mate. What you're on my fucking property and you're and I'm fucking stealing, huh? I'm, we're sorry, mate. We're, if fucking you, sorry. If you let go off the rope, we'll just be leaving. Leave. We'll never see you again. No, I'll never see you again.
Now you think he's fucking funny, don't you? I'm not laughing. I'll tell you this quite seriously. exploration was one of our favourites we have ever done, mainly because of the fame surrounding the mysterious boat, yet we haven't seen comprehensive coverage of its interior in recent years. It is the perfect place that we enjoyed documenting firsthand, and additionally required a strenuous amount of dedication to see it succeed. The Duke of Lancaster would tragically continue to rot on the Welsh shores, despite various plans in the last decade for a 300 bedroom hotel, paintballing arena and a dockside attraction. Legal battles progress to this day that seem to mostly focus on a small bridge on the access road to the ship that the council claims is too weak to hold fire engines, hence it becoming a fire safety concern. It is a one-of-a-kind abandoned site that we will remember for decades to come for many reasons, and we would like to think that this documentary can prove a resource to anyone with any intrigue into the silhouetted ferry besides the River Dee. Hopefully, these seemingly unsuccessful talks will result in something happening to the shipwreck soon, or it will remain a fascinating blight on the Welsh coastline forever. Here are some of our photographs captured at the Duke of Lancaster. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description, where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We really hope you enjoyed one of our favourite videos we've ever made. Remember to check out our magazine on our website for more amazing explorations like this. See you next time.